Photoshop, it's been real, but I've got to be honest. I just don't know if I need you anymore. It's not you, it's me and, well, ChatGPT. I've been getting better, faster, and easier to achieve results editing photos with ChatGPT's most recent update. How can I just end it after almost 30 years of using Photoshop? Well, I'll show you 24 reasons why, right now. 24 jaw-dropping ways you can edit your images with simple text prompts. I put ChatGPT to the test in this video, trying out every editing scenario I could think of, including challenging ChatGPT to do a complex series of edits I did myself with Photoshop to compare our results. And then I followed that challenge up with another to see if it could create better cover art than me after I spent hours fiddling around in design and Canva. So let's dig in, because I've got a ton to show you, starting with some rapid-fire easy edits anyone can do. 1. Changing colors is a breeze. 2. Creating a new pose for your character and having that character stay consistent? Priceless. Do I really need to share the other 22 reasons? Probably not, but I'm having fun, so let's just keep going. But just so you know, I made those two changes at once, all with this one simple prompt. Can you please edit this image to make the Aurora Borealis purple and show the same penguin waving with one wing? 3. I made a few more edits to this image, and with each new iteration, the image's style stayed consistent. I wanted to add another character, and I wanted to make sure that it came out similar to this penguin. Only I asked for this one to have more feminine features and to be pointing at the camera. Number four, you can add objects too. So I gave these penguins party hats and noisemakers and confetti. And for number five, as you may have noticed, these images are now in a new aspect ratio compared to the original image. I asked for 16 by 9, so it's not perfect, but at least it's a wide image. Plenty of ways to crop your image for free. And number six. What you probably didn't notice is how ChatGPT corrected itself as we went from image to image. For instance, I noticed that this bow changed color when I added the party hats. In the next image, it was fixed. And then her mouth got weird when I added the confetti, but that was all fixed too without my asking when I added text. Which brings me to reason number seven for dropping Photoshop like it's hot. But before I move on to that, you've got to see this because I noticed that there's quite a bit of degradation from image to image. But fear not, I've got a couple of ideas on how to fix that, and I'm going to test those out at the end of this video. I'm almost positive that it's the secret sauce you should put on all your ChatGBT image exports, at least for now. But first, I want to share some more game-changing capabilities we now have access to. So number seven is, oh my god, we finally have text! Before this update, ChatGPT was not great with text. It was kind of hit or miss, mostly miss. But now, yep, creating or changing text is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So far, I've shown you how to work with images that you create inside ChatGPT, but there's no reason why you can't edit uploaded images too. In fact, I wanted to see if ChatGPT could do better than me with Photoshop. And Chat was all like, challenge accepted. That should be reason number eight because Chat is always down for a challenge. Anyway, here's an example of an image I spend a ton of time editing. This is the original image I created in design. I used bits and pieces from other images and a bit of Photoshop's generative AI to fill in the gaps. I wanted the llama to look like it was scrubbing the floor, and this image just didn't hit the mark. So combining all these images together, I came up with this final result after what I'm guessing was at least 20 minutes of work, but most likely more. Okay, so I didn't time myself, but I wouldn't be surprised if I spent an hour fiddling with this image in Photoshop. Just look at all these layers. What's your guess? You think chat can do better? I uploaded two reference images. The first one is to show the llama's pose, and the second image is to give chat an idea of what the bucket and brush should look like. Then I did my very best within my prompt to describe my final result for the best possible comparison. Feel free to pause if you want to read the whole prompt. And wow, I was impressed. I am impressed. From start to finish in real time, it took 12 minutes for me to describe what I wanted and for ChatGPT to deliver 
not one, but two options for me to choose from. Now, that won't happen all the time, obviously, because this is to give ChatGPT feedback on which response is better, but I was impressed with these results. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. ChatGPT's version of the image beats mine hands down. The background is better, the bubbles are better, and it's almost exactly what I asked for. So this confirms it. Reason number eight to drop Photoshop is clear. Using ChatGPT is just faster and better than using Photoshop, at least in this example. The only thing it got wrong was the bucket's placement and the aspect ratio. One more quick prompt and it fixed the composition, but not the width. I'm sure the aspect ratio bug will be worked out eventually. Reason number nine to edit your images with ChatGPT is to play with style. I turned myself into a comic book hero with this image and this prompt. You've got to try this. Number 10 on the list is color cast. You can easily adjust the color temperature in your images, whether you just want a little more warmth or even if you have a specific palette in mind. I took a screenshot of one of my favorite color palettes and attached it to get this image. Number 11 goes hand in hand with number 10, lighting. By using phrases like high key, golden hour, and cyberpunk, I'm also describing the lighting. Color and lighting go hand in hand. I use them together in this prompt, but you could certainly adjust the lighting without mentioning color at all. Number 12, AI human co-creation. Here's a prompt I tried a while back that did not get the results I was looking for. This is a doodle I created by hand, and I wanted ChatGPT to add to it by turning my doodles into silly creatures. Last time I got this, which was cute and followed the same Zentangle style I was using in my own art, but it didn't add to my art the way I wanted it to. Surprisingly, this time, Chat described the art it was going to make first, and even gave each of the creatures unique names and personalities. And then Chat asked if I wanted a separate image for each doodle of the creatures, or if it was okay to just add to my image. I said to go ahead and draw right on top of the doodles. Now this is more of what I was asking for. So much fun. Speaking of fun, isn't that reason enough? I think so. That's why fun is number 13 on our list, and I may have had a bit too much fun creating this video's thumbnail image. And I may have cheated and used my dear old Photoshop for just a few tiny tweaks. What can I say? I'm a perfectionist. I guess Photoshop's not dead so much as a barely there zombie seeking brains. But compared to so many other image editing requests I've made of ChatGPT over the past few months, all of these examples are miles above and beyond what I used to get. But hold on, because we're just getting started, and I saved the best and most important parts for last, including a prompt I suggest you use on every one of your images. Because, see here, some of these images are soft and lacking in some much-needed pop. But we'll get back to that in a minute. Number 14 on the list is that you can fix flubs. Here's something even Photoshop can't do. You ever take a bunch of photos and then when you finally capture that perfect moment, the lens goes out of focus? We've all been there. A few months ago, I tried to see if ChatGPT could salvage this photo. The result it gave me wasn't much better. With this new update, though, I wanted to give it another shot. So I uploaded some in-focus reference photos that were taken just before this one so that hopefully our AI photo editing assistant could use it to recreate the blurred image. And I wasn't disappointed. The image was improved, but not quite as sharp as I'd like it. But when I asked for a sharper image, the quality went downhill fast. So I downloaded the first result it gave me, opened a new chat window, and repeated the process with the slightly sharper image. This one is a little grainy, but it's also a lot sharper. Here's before. Here's after round one. And finally, this is what came after round two of sharpening. Not bad. Not bad at all. Admittedly, reason number 15 is more of a future reason to edit your photos with ChatGPT. Because I know they're trying, but the truth is that consistent characters are still kind of hit or miss. And when they're a miss, they're not any better than the old image generator. I tried to create a character sheet of my favorite cyberpunk avatar, but no matter how I prompted, and despite the multiple screenshots I uploaded as references, it still couldn't get the style right. Side note, I love this character sheet anyway, and I put it through design's image-to-image -image filter to fix the style. 
You can learn more about Design's amazing character consistency in this video right up here. They're doing it right. And hey, it's not that I don't love the images chat creates, but the consistency is still not there sometimes. Am I doing something wrong here? What is it? Please tell me, because strangely enough, as you'll see in number 16 on our list, I was able to get stunning consistency by asking for a perspective change in this image. The character and background are a near-perfect match in color, style, and character consistency. It zoomed out for me, too, in a second perspective change. Wait till you see how I can use these images to make an amazing animation. But I've got some more show-stopping abilities to share with you first. Number 17. Scene change, anybody? You can even remove and replace the backgrounds in your images. And number 18 on the list is right behind that. Because not only that, but you're able to create and download transparent ping-formatted image files of your images with the removed backgrounds. And look, it even kept the little bokeh sparkles. Photoshop is barely ever this perfect when it removes backgrounds. And so far, ChatGPT is two for two on perfect background removal. Number 19. I heard we could make infographics now, so I gave it a shot. Chat did okay with visualizing some of my favorite law of attraction concepts. They need work, but they're off to a good start. Number 20. It can create book covers. Now, I already created a cover I'm happy with for my current book in progress, but I wanted to see what ChatGPT could come up with anyway, especially since it already knows my characters pretty well. And I just let Chat come up with the idea too, which ended up being strikingly similar to my own idea. And this is pretty awesome if you ask me. One prompt and this is what came out. What do you think? Do you like my cover better or ChatGPT's cover? You won't offend me, I promise. Drop your vote in the comments below. Because I'm really just curious, especially if any of you out there are cozy mystery lovers. Okay, just a few more fun things you can do before I share how you can make your final images sparkle no matter how many tweaks you want to make. Number 21 is costume changes. You can pull clothing and accessories out of images to create outfits and mood boards for your characters. It took me a few iterations for Beauty's outfit, but I finally got one I was happy with. Then, just for fun, I decided to play dress up. I don't think our cyberpunk girl likes wearing this princess dress very much. But wait, this is what impressed me most. I took a few quick phone shots of my actual clothing laid out on the floor, and ChatGPT dressed up Miss Cyberpunk in exactly what I was wearing yesterday. But the fun didn't stop there, because you don't have to have reference images to create something completely brand new, even if it's creatures that don't exist. So that's number 22. Please create an image of a Slibblesaurus Rex. That's a mini T-Rex that's also one-third snake and one-third pibble. An adorable pitbull puppy. Now what about a giraffekin? That's a dragon that's half giraffe. Chat even made me a spotted Siamese cat cactus. And a slothopotamus. All that fun stuff aside, we've got some images to fix. And this is probably something you should do to improve all of your final images. Number 23 is to put some finishing touches on your images. You can even ask ChatGPT to enhance, upscale, and sharpen your images. So let's see what we can do about all this noise and obvious quality loss we can see in this image. It took me a few attempts to get the quality I was looking for, and then I realized that Chat was having trouble enhancing it to the level I wanted all in one prompt, just like when I was trying to fix that out-of-focus image of my babies earlier. So I downloaded the slightly improved version it gave me, re-uploaded it, and asked chat to work from there and make it better. You can pause to read each prompt as I refined what I was asking for. Even if your images don't degrade as badly as this penguin one did, it doesn't hurt to ask for a little sharpening and upscaling. I recommend you do this for all of your final images. And here's the results from the first penguin image, to the second, to the third, and final result that I'm pretty happy with. Not quite as sharp as this first one, that's what I was aiming for, but it is much improved. And last, number 24 on our list, and certainly not least, because this is what I realized when I saw what ChatGPT is capable of now. 
because using all that you've learned so far in this video, you can make small adjustments to your images and then use a tool like Kling AI, which does have a free plan, by the way, to make your scenes come to life. Here's a few examples of videos I made from the images we created today in this video. Not too shabby, huh? I made all these videos using frames in Kling AI, and if you want to learn more about how to do that, I cover everything I've learned so far in this video right here.